Hello, today is Friday the 12th of November. In this video today, we're gonna to run through some US stocks in no particular order. We'll start with United Health, United Health Group. This is a stock that has achieved an all-time high, a new all-time high in the last, last week or so, just continues to move uh, well. I note this particular stock, um, how it did sort of congest in between this range here. And we're looking, you know, May to October, that's about five months in this range between what 420 430 down to 400 a little bit lower than that and it did sort of sideways you know move sideways and consolidate there for that period of time even dropped down towards the bottom of that range and then has pushed up so well in the last month or so moving to this new all-time high did meet this level here moved away and has had another little run and perhaps made a bit of short-term resistance right at that level but there's little to fault with this stock. I mean, if it was to decline a little bit from uh, the current all time highs, and you could easily see the top of this range around that 420, 430 mark, potentially offering some support should it come back down to that level. So you could do the math and work out what potential profit there is there for a potential short trade, but you certainly can't doubt the strength of that overall longer term trend just continues to move very, very well. And right this second, you know, the last month or so, has pushed up to the new all-time highs. The next stop stock is Procter and Gamble, very similar, also achieving a new all-time high uh, within the last uh, the last week or so. However, I do note there's very different picture between this and the previous United Health, in that you'll note that, and you'll notice I zoomed out for a reason. The previous all-time high was back here at around 146 or thereabouts, a bit higher than that fallen away very strongly from that and eventually moved its way back. But when it got back there just a month or two ago, met a lot of resistance, traded through met resistance again and got sold off. And sure enough, has returned to that level right now. So very different picture to United Health, where United Health has just consistently made uh, new, new highs, uh, whereas this is returning to old ground. And yes, it's achieved a new all-time high and poked its head above. But you can't deny the sort of significance of its current level. And there's certainly no guarantee it's going to continue to push through and push through to new highs, given the fact that it has met resistance at that level on several occasions. And even if it was to fail at this level, you know, the potential downside really is probably to the top of this range here, 138, which has been the low points of here. Now I could probably draw a line in there for you to make that a little bit clearer. So right around the 138 mark thereabouts where it's been the resistance through this period here and moved through and then it's become the support level. If this resistance was to stand tall and prevent higher prices, you could easily just see it coming back to that 138 level and meeting some support at that level. Next is Walt Disney. We've covered this stock previously simply because of the significance of this level uh, throughout this year meeting that level on several occasions, meeting, you know, finding support at that level. And certainly more recently, you know, repeatedly day after day for several weeks, just hitting that level and bouncing off, bouncing off, obviously meeting a lot of support there. Now this has gapped down significantly. There must, you would think there's a reason for that. I haven't checked into the fundamentals behind that, a clearly reason, but of more significance is the fact that it's broken through uh, that key level and, and that level that has provided so much support uh, for this stock, certainly over the last, six months so it'll be interesting to see if it can regain that lost ground or that whether in fact it's begun a new range below that key level at 168. the next stock is citrix also a stock that's uh, moving lower similar to walt disney if i just zoom out a little bit for perspective you can see this is now at a, a multi-year low moving through this low point here right around 90 dollars and just continues to form lower peaks lower troughs you know, lower peak here, another lower trough, moves back up to a lower peak and then on its way now down to a lower trough, wherever that may be. So just continuing to, to move lower. You know, it's trading at a multi-year low. Uh, there's a reason why stocks trade at multi-year lows and it all comes down to certainly a lack of demand or excessive selling or, of course, a combination of both. But uh, certainly there's sort of no obvious turning point here because the resistance or potential support is years ago. And we're looking maybe $75 back here, but again, that's several years ago. So the effectiveness of that level potentially diminishes over time as it sort of is several years ago. Um, but certainly moving at multi-year lows and just continues uh, to move lower. So certainly in a very strong downtrend. 
uh, fist serve. Also moving lower just in the last you know, six months or so, was trading up at 126 now, sort of right around the $100 mark. But a little bit different here where, yes, it's trading in a sort of you know 12 month low, but it has been able to move through this level here. But interestingly enough, it's come back down. I might just again, draw another line in here, somewhere around the 92, $95 mark. I could draw that, I'll just draw that right around $92. So you can see where that level has provided a lot of support for the stock uh, last year and it's just starting to return may have even just run into a bit of a glut of demand here as it moved down lower and pushing it back up so even though it's moving lower and has for the last six months quite strongly it does have potentially this area of support here to kick in and prop it up and potentially you know hold it up and maybe force a little bit of a rally but again if it was to break through that level then we could potentially see it you know moving back to these lower levels down here Next is global payments. Also a stock struggling, similar picture, you know, last six months fallen significantly. I mean, this is almost halved in price, you know, trading at a roughly 18 month low. Again, we've seen a lot of stocks, you know, I mean, we saw basically every stock fall when the pandemic was announced earlier last year, fall to significant lows, but a lot of stocks have recovered and regained that lost ground. And we've seen a lot of stocks that have declined the last six months moving back to those levels and finding some support there and what we see with this particular stock you know currently around the 128 and this level around 110 certainly you can't deny the strength of the you know medium to longer term downtrend but potentially it could come back down to 110 and maybe that might be it and you might see a bit of support you know when people look back here and see what happened when it got to 110 last time and how much how strongly it regained and bounced back up that might encourage enough buyers to get in there and you know hopefully enjoy the same sort of uh, price action insight and i think we've covered this stock before as well so here is an example of a stock you know at its sort of lows at the when the pandemic was announced there's the low there and here's a stock at that low level right now so it has obviously met a lot of support here at 64 that low is at 62 just hit that two weeks ago bounce back off will it re, re sort of visit that level and potentially test that level again uh, certainly we've seen again when stocks have reached those you know pandemic announcement levels they have been able to bounce off but if they do fall lower and you can see that level probably stretches back even further how significant that level has been um, that would certainly not be very good news for this particular stock price if it was to break through that level and you know effectively establish a new range below that key level around $62. Next is Mohawk Industries. This one is a little bit different. It hasn't, it's sort of not, you know, revisiting those significant lows, but what we have seen is this level through, um, what's this, round 170, let's call it 175 to sort of capture most of those levels here. So a lot of support being felt at that level and again, just the last two weeks, really testing that level, sort of loosely forming a descending triangle, lower peaks through this period, but very static uh, low points and where the supporters remain quite constant. But it's really testing that level right now. And, you know, can it hold on and really, you know, at the end of its fingertips, just sort of hanging on to that level to see if it can remain above that $175 level. If it cannot and makes a significant fall below, potentially rally back up and retest that level and meet resistance there, again, you can potentially see a lot of downside potential this. With this, if it you know fails to remain above that key level at the moment. Next is Pinnacle, uh, Pinnacle West. So here's a stock, you know, again, we uh, another one where uh, here's the pandemic announcement, fell very, very strongly, came down to $60 and bounced off there strongly. And we're returning to that level now. You cannot deny how strong this downtrend is in the last five or six months, up near $90 now, just above 60. So a significant fall, but it is coming back to this level back here. So again, you know, is it going to continue to decline? Well, the trend would indicate it's highly likely it could do that. But when it gets to 60, what's it going to do? Will it bounce off that? Will it bounce off it quite strongly? Find a lot of support there as it's done previously. Again, we're seeing a lot of these stocks now declining over the last six months, but meeting those sort of pandemic announcement lows and reacting to those levels. But of course, if it does break through, that's uh, not a great sign for those stocks. And there's sort of, uh, you know, 
immediate future sort of price and where they're heading and heading lower. We've covered this stock before, AT and T. Uh, we've identified uh, this level here as being key. So here's another, you know, pandemic announcement drop down to around twenty six dollars. Didn't recover as well as some other stocks have, and we can see how this stock has relied on that level of support there uh, on on a few occasions, and more recently, again, strong decline over the last six months hitting that level and now breaking through quite strongly, coming back, retesting, finding that resistance at that level and then moving away. So here's a stock that, you know, is at multi-year lows and there's a reason why stocks trade at multi-year lows and that's, you know, all the demand and supply. And here's a stock that's not looking too good so far as moving higher is concerned, but certainly moving very, very strongly uh, lower. And finally today, Western Union uh, similar. Uh, similar picture, you just repeat what I've just said previously. Here's the pandemic announcement. Reasonably strong fall, has recovered well, and now we're revisiting that level now, finding a bit of support. Can it hang on? That's the question. Oh, well, that's it for today, Friday, the 12th of November. I hope that's been of some help to you, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. 